This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, just in time for the holidays, we talk with two people who will definitely inspire you. We'll tell you what they're doing next. A very Merry Christmas Eve, everyone, and thanks for watching FYI on SSP TV. I'm Ken Cara. Let's get to some headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We have an update on that robbery that took place Monday in Hazel Township. The Pennsylvania State Police have released these surveillance photos. The photos show that the two male suspects were armed and their faces covered during the robbery at Community Bank on the airport road in Hazel Township. State Police have not said if the suspects got away with any money. The robbery happened at 510 Monday afternoon at the Community Bank on Airport Road. Anyone with information on the bank robbery is asked to call Pennsylvania State Police in Hazelton at 570-459-3. 3890. A 38-year-old woman from Shenandoah was the target of an assault in the city of Hazleton. Police responded to the area of North Laurel Street and West 1st Street just before 4 p.m. Tuesday for a report of a woman who had been assaulted. According to police, the victim was walking in the area when she was struck from behind by two young Hispanic males who struck her multiple times and stole her purse. They fled on foot and were last seen heading east, west on 1st Street. Police have not released any information on the extent of the victim's injuries. If anyone has information on the incident, please call Hazleton Police. She spent countless hours watching out for the best interest of taxpayers. Longtime consumer advocate Vicki Mackin has died. Whether it was a school board meeting, government meeting, anything that impacted the taxpayer, Mrs. Mackin took to the podium to voice her concerns and provide her opinion. We interviewed her many times over the years as she questioned the cost of projects or the reasoning behind them. And it was Mrs. Mackin, along with the late Joe Lula, who founded the watchdog group, the Concerned Citizens of Schuylkill County. And whether officials agreed with her or or not, they always respected her opinion. Vicki Mackin sat on numerous boards and committees and was an active volunteer. She won numerous awards for her work with the Girl Scouts of America. Vicki Mackin was 90 years old. Everyone here at SSP TV sends our sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Vicki Mackin. She will certainly be missed. Today is Christmas Eve. For Christians around the world, it means the birth of Jesus Christ, their Savior. For those who follow the Julian calendar, Christ's birth is celebrated on December 25th. Many will attend Christmas Eve Mass and gather for the Holy Supper with family and friends. The Reverend Louis Grippy, pastor of Most Precious Blood Church, shared a brief reflection on the birth of the baby Jesus. Joseph and Mary set out for Bethlehem. When they arrived there, the time came for Mary to have her baby and she gave birth to a son. All of us are journeying to Bethlehem where we hope to be born. I know we were born once. Nevertheless, we are still unborn in the sense that our true and full self hasn't yet seen the light of day. When our second birth occurs, then all the gifts of grace and nature which God gives us as seeds will blossom and bear fruit. Our ultimate goal is the heavenly Bethlehem, where we shall see God face to face. From the Lasan family and everyone here at FYI and SSP TV, we extend our best wishes for a blessed Christmas and to those of the Jewish faith, we wish you a very blessed and happy Hanukkah. I was learning a new chapter in Crestwood Girls basketball coach Pat Brogan's inspiring story of his fight against Estonia when he told me about another incredible inspiring story. According to the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation, dystonia is characterized by persistent or intermittent muscle contractions causing abnormal, often repetitive movements, postures, or both. There are several forms of dystonia, and you're going to meet someone with generalized dystonia. That means the dystonia may affect multiple parts of the body simultaneously. Thanks to a procedure called deep brain stimulation, Pat Brogan is able to keep his dystonia in check for the most part. It's still not easy. He's been through five brain surgeries in 2014. Brogan always looks for the positives. He says he has almost good days and really good days. He has a good attitude and he knows it could be a lot worse. So I'm, I'm encouraged. and But the other thing is I'm also humbled because when you come to the event and you meet a girl like Stephanie Zaya from Boston and she's 25 and, and she can't, she's just prone. Her whole body is just, is just, it's like she's like cramped up. She can't even sit in a wheelchair. 
So, and she's had DBS and it didn't work. Now she's trying other options, so, and there, but there's very few left. But she's, she's keeping hope and, and she's such a strong girl. She's even starting her own foundation for people that are really disabled in wheelchairs or not just to get out and socialize, particularly young people or people in their 20s because nothing like that really exists. And she never complains. She's always smiling and her parents are fighting for her. It's, it's just a real inspiring story. Uh, it, it, to me it is. She was an athlete in high school, uh, running track I believe, and then her sophomore year she started to walk differently and the cramping and then it just escalated to full-blown generalized dystonia. She, she's, she graduated from University of Illinois. It took her seven years, but she did, and she's had every setback imaginable, and, but she's still fighting through it and trying to help, as we all are, to, to find a cure. Every year, Pat Brogan has a fundraiser for the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation. And this year, he also wanted to help Stephanie Zaya's foundation called Pathways that will help handicapped children socialize. How did you meet Pat Brogan? How did you guys know each other? Um, I saw the Twisted film that he was in, and then I came down for one of his events back like seven years ago, eight years, seven, something like that. Well, our first event is going to be March 7th in Boston, and we're just putting up a web page that she's doing. As I said, it's it's new. It's 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 still a work in progress. It's still yeah, it's still a work in progress, but we we're getting there. <laughs> And we'll keep you updated on the progress of Pathways. The movie Stephanie mentioned, Twisted, is a documentary about people living with dystonia that featured Pat Brogan. You can order, order the DVD at blinddogfilms.com slash twisted. And if you want to help the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation, go to dystonia-foundation.org. And remember, we'll have more on Brogan on the next Out of Left Field. Coming up on FYI in sports, it's the second part of my interview with Penn State All-American and Lombardi Award winner Bruce Clark. And when FYI comes back, we will learn all about the SHINE program and what it will do for the Hazleton Area School District. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Everyone has their goals about losing weight. I'm only half the size of these jeans. Unfortunately, they're not my jeans. But anyway, we're talking about denim and organizing ourselves for the new year. We talk about resolutions, and I'm a big fan of goals. We always have themes for our years, right, Tamara? Mine is respect time. Yes. My time, your time, all of our time. What's yours? You'll see. Oh, she doesn't know yet. That's right. <laughs> all right. So we're talking about denim and how we can use denim or torn jeans. As you can see, we have a pair of torn jeans with us right. and make planners, right? Get right. organized. A few weeks ago, I did a segment on denim. I remember I yes. braided the rug and yes. I made a couple different things with Sold denim. Sold your husband's jeans. Yeah. I oh, no, <laughs> won't mention that. Um, <laughs> Um, and I had a whole bag of everything I cut up left over. Okay. So what I did is I took all the pockets. These were actually the pants legs. Mm -hmm. So I took the pant legs, I hot glued them, and I attached all the pockets of the jeans. And I thought that's a so great... So really you are fitting into all of your jeans. I am. So Even my daughter's. Different way. She Ooh, gave I me like heck it. too because she's like, Mom, they were my jeens. So it's like, you never hey, want to don't part leave with the stuff laying around by me because right? I'll find something to do with it. Yeah, but it's good. It's like put your cords in it, put whatever, um, CDs, pens, whatever you want to put in it. I don't care. It's just a way to organize. And it was just using old repurposed stuff. Nice. All right. So happy new year to all of you. Happy we new hope year. that you are setting goals, attainable goals for the new year that you can keep throughout the whole year. Right? Right. Happy 2015. Happy 2015. Can you and believe it? We'll see you next week. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. 
keep dreaming of a white Christmas. It's not looking good, friends. Here's our Christmas Eve forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, showers and thunderstorms. Low around 40. It will be breezy out there with gusts as high as 41 miles per hour. New rainfall amounts between a quarter and a half of an inch are possible. As we move on to our extended forecast for Christmas Day, a slight chance of rain showers before 7 a.m., then a slight chance of rain and snow showers after 11 a.m. So maybe we'll see a little bit of the white stuff, mostly cloudy with a high near 42, another windy day on Thursday night. It will remain windy, partly cloudy with a low around 30. Friday looks mostly sunny with a high near 40 as the warm weather sticks around. Friday night, partly cloudy, low around 32. Saturday, another partly sunny day with a high of 45. Saturday night, a low of 31. And on Sunday, a chance of rain and snow showers, high of 40. Sunday night, maybe some freezing rain in our area, so be careful, low of 28 degrees. Your local weather is brought to you by the Pines Eatery and Spirits, where you can enjoy the classics like the Pines Barbecue or something new like their Philly-style Turkey Club. That's one of their specials this week. An award-winning after-school program is making its way to Luzerne County and to the Hazelton Area School District. The program, known as SHINE, has been working in Carbon County for a decade. And now, thanks to the cooperative effort by Pennsylvania Senator John Udichak and Congressman Lou Barletta, the program will be implemented in Luzerne County. Four school districts have been selected to kick off the program in the county, the Hazelton Area School District being one of them. It will begin its implementation in the fall of 2015. Officials gathered recently for the announcement. Barletta and Udichak say their latest effort is a continuation of Operation Gang Up, which was geared to discourage children from getting involved with gangs. The two lawmakers explain why this is so important to the area, and Superintendent of Schools Dr. Francis X. Antonelli also talks about the benefits of SHINE. Well, Senator John Yudichek and I have been working very closely together. He's been a great partner uh, for me and an example of how Democrats and Republicans can put their politics aside to, to try to do something good. We started Operation Gang Up, uh, and we wanted to uh, leave something behind uh, when, when, when the program was over. And we really came uh, across a program that, that was in Carbon County, is in Carbon County. They've been doing it for 10 years. It's an after-school program for at-risk students. Uh, students who are dropping out or failing or, and, and uh, who after school may not go home to a family and, and really are at risk uh, and will end up being unfortunately involved in, uh, uh, in, in crime or, or uh, again, on the taxpayers' uh, uh, roles to, to support them. Four years ago, Congressman Barlett and I grew frustrated as we watched more and more of our children be overwhelmed by drugs and violence as we watch more and more of our students fall behind in school or simply drop out, leaving themselves and our region with little economic hope or opportunities. Last year, more than 300 students, 300 students dropped out of Luzerne County Schools. That's 300 young adults. The statistics tell us that are more likely to be unemployed on public assistance or incarcerated. Our children in Luzerne County deserve a better future than that. Congressman Barletta and I said enough is enough. It's students and homes in education. That's the acronym. It's an evidence-based, research-based program that has been quite successful throughout the Commonwealth and close to home here in Carbon County. They've had it for 10 years and it's been very, very successful in increasing student achievement, increasing student attendance, and decreasing classroom discipline referrals. Now, how do they do this? It's a four-day, 32-week program during the school year and during the course of the summer. And it basically provides the uh, students with exposure to the STEM concepts science, technology, engineering, and math. They've also introduced the arts, so it's actually STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. A lot of project-based learning. Uh, social skills are also involved with the, uh, with the curriculum. Uh, kindergarten, a lot of home visitations, getting the school and the home connected in a meaningful way to impact the uh, child's education. The elementary grades involves a lot of instructional support for the students. Uh, middle school, they have a component called career pathways, 
which exposes the middle school student to career uh, opportunities and how to pursue those opportunities and actually realize and fulfill a career ambition. And then the high school kids are used as mentors for the program. Wilkes University will serve as the educational host for Luzerne County Shine. Up next on FYI, it's sports time and the second part of my interview with Bruce Clark. This is FYI News 13 Sports. It's time for part two of my interview with two-time All-American Bruce Clark. Clark was a defensive lineman at Penn State in the 70s, and he played in the 1979 Sugar Bowl that matched up number one Penn State against number two Alabama for the national championship. Penn State lost the game but came oh so close to winning Joe Paterno's first national title. The picture of Nittany Lion Mike Gooman being stopped on fourth and goal from the Alabama one brings joy to Bama fans and sadness to the Penn State faithful. But not me. I always found some inspiration in the Lions loss thanks to a quote from Joe Paterno. Clark has other thoughts. Here he'll talk about that game, his relationship with former teammate and current ESPN college football analyst Matt Millen, and he'll give us his thoughts on Pat Brogan. I spoke with Clark at Brogan's annual fundraiser for the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation. Brogan has been living with Dystonia for over a decade. What great teams you're on, I, and I only got to see one game, it was the 79 Sugar Bowl, I watched it on the Big Ten Network, I had the pleasure of talking with Mike Gooman, and he autographed a picture of me trying to get into the end zone, and it inspires me every day as a next generation Penn State fan, I have a quote underneath it from Joe Paterno that says, success is never final, failure is rarely fatal, it's a moment that inspired me, is it different from the team, I mean looking back on that game and everything? Well, you see, we got two different memories, because you know, Matt Mill and I were there that day, until this day I cannot stand the sound rule old tired and every day every year they play on ESPN classic this this classic the Penn State Alabama game so it's a reoccurring theme but you know that game made us and inspired us that class of juniors that year Matt Milline, Gooman and Suey to come back the next year to try to do it again and we were determined to become the players that Joe always knew we had confidence because a lot of us started our freshman year and that was the climax that game and the next year of our tenure there at Penn State and we wanted to make Joe become the first the first national champion unfortunately to come up short but you know he went on to have a few more after that last two things one is Penn State pick games I remember them vaguely I mean what was it really like being a Pennsylvania guy from out there well me I'm, I was born up raised in Newcastle Pennsylvania it's 40 miles an hour for Pittsburgh so everybody thought I was going to Pitt and everybody thought Matt may have gone to Maryland but you know when he and I uh, met at the big 33 game become close friends and we both decided to go to Penn State at the time we knew we were going there for a purpose and we knew that we were going to get the education we always aspired to get to this day. Look how well Matt's doing in the announcing games. Now, this was a communication major at Penn State. And if you saw how he communicated with Joe, you would have never thought he did so well being a communication major. But he's doing extremely well, and I'm proud of him. And it just shows you the type of education you can get, the type of career you can get, and most importantly, the, the education you can get at Penn State. Last thing, Pat Brogan bringing uh, here in Hazleton. How do you know Pat and how special? I mean, he's a s amazing guy. Uh, Pete, who I met at a function over at, at Penn State, we were trying to restore all of Joe's 409 victories. He was there selling memorabilia, and he was telling me the story of Pat. And I'm going, oh, my God, this guy's incredible. How'd you, how was you able to be blessed enough to come across the individual like that, somebody that's as inspiring he is? And me having five daughters, I wish they may get the opportunity to be coached by a young man like that because what he's been able to accomplish, what he's been able to deal with, you know, everybody says, oh, us in NFL concussion, the problems you guys are coming. The things he's dealing with and how successful he's become in doing it, I'm not worthy. You know, he's my new hero. I love what he's doing and what he means to his community, what he means to his team, and how inspiring he is. You know, and when I think of Pete, Pat, I think of Jimmy V. You know, don't ever, ever get up, but I don't think he ever will. Clark was an All-American, and now we have some local All-State football players to tell you about on the FYI Standard Speaker Scoreboard. Marion Catholic defensive lineman Joe Damiano and linebacker Nick Sully were both named to the single-A All-State team. Two more Anthracite League players made the double-A All-State team, North Schuylkill wide receiver Tevin Murray and Spartan linebacker Major Jordan. In boys basketball, on Tuesday, Scranton Prep beat Hazleton area and Notre Dame East Stroudsburg taught Marion. 
MMI, they beat Weatherly. Corey Rogers had 18 points for the Preppers. The Marion girls got a Skooka League win over Weatherly. Tamaqua girls, they lost to Lee Highton. And MMI lost a close one to Columbia Montour Votech. Redding swept a swimming meet from Hazel Tenary and Pine Grove beat Monoy area in wrestling. If you want to go out, then you want to go to Bottlenecks, the place everyone is talking about. You want to go where the food is as good as the atmosphere, where you can find mouth-watering steaks, amazing appetizers, seafood, burgers, wraps, and of course, you want to go for the award-winning wings. Bottlenecks is the perfect place to meet with friends for lunch, dinner, or drinks after work. So if you want to go where everyone is having a good time, you want to go to Bottlenecks. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy 14th birthday to Megan Fay. Love from mom, dad, Chloe, and your family. Happy birthday, Carol Matz, from Annie and all of your family and friends. And one more quick announcement. The McAdoo Fire Company will be holding their annual Super Bowl food sale Sunday, February 1st, from noon to 4. They'll once again be serving wings in several flavors, pork barbecue, and strombolis. Pre-orders will be taken until January 25th by calling 570-929-2042. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Edward F. Carlick of Freeland, funeral is Friday at 9 a.m. from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Bernard W. Stefanovich, formerly of Freeland, funeral is Saturday at 9 a.m. from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Friends may call Saturday from 8 to 9 a.m. Doreen Voivodich, formerly of Hazleton, memorial is Saturday at 10 a.m. in the St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Vicki Mackin of McAdoo. Mass is Saturday at 11 a.m. in the Church of All Saints. Friends may call Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Boyle Funeral Home. And Robert F. Doherty of Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 9.30 a.m. in the St. Gabriel's Church. Friends may call Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Boyle Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Thomas Gallagher of Tamaqua. Thomas, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. For stories on Santa, Joe Madden, and more, watch FYI on Christmas Day. It's a special gather the whole family. And remember, the Year in Review edition, Standard Speaker, their Year in Review will be available this Sunday. Have a good Christmas Eve. Take it easy, everybody.